Hello and welcome back to Digital Learning. Um, in this episode, I am speaking with Laura Woods, the uh, project coordinator for Library Media Technology here in Pinellas County Schools. And we are going and visiting some of the schools that have exciting things going on in their media centers. And our next stop is Countryside High School with Jody Anio Preso as the media specialist there. So let's dive right in and have uh, Jody tell us about what she's doing. When I first got here, it was um, rows and rows of books and some new tables, a lot of old tables, dingy carpet, and that was it. And one day, a gentleman came in with a shirt and tie and started looking around, well, we can change this, we can change that. So I thought I need to introduce myself to him. <laughs> so I did. Um, and he said, we're going to give you some money to redesign the media center. He said, come up with a plan, email me your plan, what you want, and um, we'll do it. So I made a design. The goal was to make it look more like a collegiate level media center and have different areas for students to be comfortable, to work, to collaborate, all of those things. And he liked the design took it to the area superintendent and had it approved and we started shopping. And what told you what kind of areas did your library need? How did you find out about that? I did a lot of research um, knowing from when I had my master's degree in school library media so that was the beginning of my knowledge on it and then went to FAME and went to some of the breakout sessions and sessions on becoming a 21st century media center. I also talked to the students, talked to the teachers, what do you want, what do you need, and put it all together and came up with the design. Um, we're busy, which is fantastic. I used to get like 10 kids a day when I first got here, and now we have probably 75 to 100 at lunches, and. Kid, teachers are sending kids down here each period. We could have anywhere from 10 in a period to 50 in a period that are coming on their own as well as classes coming. So we're extremely busy, but it's, it feels easy to run because there's a system in place. And, and I ran orientations with all the students to show them the new areas and give them the guidelines of how to use the new areas and what to do in the new areas. So I don't have any difficulty with managing it. The other part of it is that my TAs are extremely helpful. I have TAs every period, um, anywhere from two to four in a class period that I have every period. So I train them on how to reshelve books, how the library is organized, how to check out books, check in books, how to help students with printing and how to help students with the, the easy technology pieces. And they are fantastic because they're juniors and seniors. So again, they're older, they're more independent, they've had experience, so they're very helpful, my TAs. So this is a case where the district came in and kind of presented her with an opportunity to say, what do you envision? We're going to make improvements here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what were some of the things that uh, helped her remake her space? Well, after we had had the opportunity to train everybody and give them some guidelines on how to put processes together. They had to go into their schools and they had to ask questions. They had to see what does the school really want? What do the teachers need? What does the administrators envision? What do the students want? What would bring them into the libraries and create the engaging areas that would keep them coming and keep them staying? And using those processes that they had learned, they have all started putting together those processes and taking that information and running with it and putting, putting together their ideas for their new library spaces. So I, I think a lot of people that work in the school system might be a little concerned about <clears throat> so many students coming in and having some freedom of movement and, and choice in uh, the types of activities that they engage in. But I heard her talking about some of the processes she put in place to make that work. Yes, once, <coughs> once she had the library put together the way she wanted it, after the, um, all of the suggestions were made, 
Then she put a large priority on the orientation pieces, which is what the media specialists do at the beginning of every year to ensure that the students know what's in the library, where they can find certain things in the library, how to use those areas appropriately, and explain that there are consequences if they cannot fulfill those requirements, they're not allowed to come back. And there really has been, I have not seen any library now so far this year that has had a problem with engagement and kids acting out or not doing what they should. They are so engaged with everything that's going on and the fact that they're being allowed the choice to do the things that they would like to do, but they're still academic that it is keeping them busy. It is keeping them moving forward and coming back. So um, we talked a little bit about, at the beginning of the show, Makerspace, and uh, she's going to share a little bit about her Makerspace. Behind me is our Makerspace area. I have three tables set up. We always have a table with coloring, uh, big coloring posters, and always have a table with a puzzle because sometimes high schoolers with the level of stress that they experience, they just need to decompress and relax a little bit and escape reality, as I say, to them. So they color and they puzzle. I also have teachers that come in on their planning period <laughs> and color and play with the puzzle. The other games we have are STEM-related, STEAM-related um, games, and we also have just stuff that's fun. We have Jenga, which is actually the most popular right now. We have chess, we have checkers. We also have snap circuits. We have a 3D doodler pen, which is a 3D, um, like a printer, but in a pen, handheld pen. We have a basket weaving kit. We have a um, robotics kit. We have a DNA kit. We have all kinds of different things that they can do that's STEM and STEAM related and also just that escape reality and decompress kind of stuff. I talked to the teachers um, because I was new to high school curriculum, so I spent a lot of time with department heads talking to them about what are your courses teaching and what kind of um, materials would you need as far as the makerspace kits, but also the books in the media center. So I give them catalogs um, and tell them to dog ear the catalogs, circle it all up, and I'll order them what they want that fits their curriculum. I have a table, a large table, collaboration table with a TV on it, flat screen TV and a laptop. And I also bought those little wiggle chairs. The kids love wiggling around. Even though they're high schoolers, they love wiggles. But they sit there and they can pass the laptop around to each other and each put their in input in and it's up on the TV screen so it's easier to see. It's more comfortable than just huddling over one computer. So would you say that compared to the past, this media center has truly become a 21st century library. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And the students are very happy with the media center. I hear it every, even though we are now two years into our, re, our remodel was finished, they still tell me daily how much better it is and how they love coming down and they love working and they can collaborate with each other and they can get on the computers and do what they need to do. And it's just, it's blossomed. It's, it's more than that blossomed, it's exploded. <laughs> so we have kids coming into the media center, but, and they're doing a lot of things. I saw um, coloring, um, I saw putting a puzzle together, um, and then uh, the STEM and STEAM and the building and so on and so forth. Um, speak to how that helps academics to have them coming in and playing games. Well, everybody needs to realize that the kids are under a lot of pressure. They are having to be successful in the classroom. They are having to be successful, especially at the high school level, with all their IB pieces, the AP pieces, all the testing that happens with all of that. And at some point, there has to be a space where they can go to, to, as she said, decompress. It's like a de-stressor. It allows them to breathe and calm down. And this in itself helps behaviors because the kids don't have to act out. They don't have to get upset. They just, they go to the media center and they use their hands and they create or they just do. And nobody's putting any pressure on them and they, they can calm down 
and focus. It helps them focus better on what they have to do next. So she did mention books. And uh, it, is, it is the media center, <laughs> it, it is the library, and so we haven't totally gone away from books. And uh, this next section, she talks a little bit about her book club. Let's hear her. Okay. Once a month, we have the Cougar Book Club, and the kids select a book that they'd like to read. I have five copies of each book, and the first five kids that sign up get to keep a copy of the book. And we meet once a month and discuss the book after school. What kind of books? Young adult. The, uh, the FTRs? No, because that's no. our battle people. Oh, okay. And our battle of the books group tends to be similar to our um, book club book. Okay, and what do you do with battle? Battle of the books, we meet here after school once a week and we get on the computers and we play Cranium Core with our Florida Teen Reads books. And I see you have something called Little Cougars. So you have big cougars and little cougars. We have big cougars and little cougars, yes. We have a preschool here, three-year-olds and four-year-olds. And our high school students take early childhood development and they teach those students. But they come to me once a week on Wednesdays into our little children's library that I have for them. And I read them a story and talk about um, features of print and things of that sort that follow the um, kindergarten standards and read them a story. And they check out books. So she had um, a number of things happening with books. Um, those preschoolers are adorable. I mean, you don't think about preschoolers on a high school campus. No, but the high schools have the early childhood education program that's teaching their, their students how to be caregivers and teachers of preschoolers, and then they'll move on to college. So it's perfect. It's like walks hand in hand. So she has a book club where she meets with students and they discuss books. Um, and then um, the Battle of the Books. So we'll talk, we'll, uh, on the show we talk a lot about Battle of the Books, but what, what, would, what were we seeing there when she was talking about Battle of the Books? What, she, they're, what they're doing is the teachers that are actually the sponsors at her school for Battle of the Books come to her and they practice the Cranium Core uh, battling technique. It's, a, it's an online game where the kids are answering questions and then they have to defend their question. And that's the important piece. They have to be able to find information in the book and defend their answer. And the one that gets the right defense the best gets the points. Well, um, she's got a lot going on. Yes. And um, let's, let's see if she wraps it up and tells us about uh, her media center being the hot spot of the school. We have about 75 to 100 kids that come in during their lunch. Some come in and they eat in our cafe area. Others work on the computers. Others also just decompress on the computers and play a game or, or something. We have a lot that come in and study, and they're all over the room. Okay, and speaking of all over the room, I understand you teach databases. I do. I work with the teachers and find out what they're researching and asking the children to research, and then bring the classes in to our lab and I show them how to use the databases to do their research. And ultimately, I, this is a library, so I'm assuming yes. kids check out books. They do check out books. We were actually the second highest in our circulation last year. I was very proud of that because we came from the very bottom of the list up to second. And so we have certain areas for certain books and kids ask me all the time if, they have, if I have a book, if I have a series, and I help them pick books to read. So tell me, what is an open mic? We started Open Mic Mondays, and students can sign up to perform at Open Mic, just like a standard Open Mic. Um, we've had singers, we have poetry readers, uh, we have guitar players who just play a song, and I've taught the students that at an Open Mic you don't clap, you snap when the performance is over, and so we do that every Monday, and the students are really enjoying it. Well. Thank you for joining us on our tour of a couple of our fantastic media centers here in Pinellas County Schools. Thank you to Kelly Kelly and Jody Amio Preso for their hard work and innovation and Laura for your leadership. And I uh, hope you'll join us for our next episode of Digital Learning.